Hello. Welcome to another episode of Stories of World War II Veterans. My name is Kayleen Reeser. I'm the author of 10 books on World War II based on my interviews with 260 World War II veterans. Today's story is the ending to um, the story that we started last week from my book, Captured Stories of American World War II Prisoners of War. We will be talking about this young man right here. His name was Bill Ingram, and where we left off last week, he had been serving with the Navy in the Java Sea in February of 1942, and the Japanese had just bombed his ship, and the captain had given the order to abandon ship. So, uh, Ingram stood as dozens of members of the Houston's crew rushed around him, securing their security. Uh, safety. The team seemed unable to think, too terrified to move. Then someone threw him a flotation device and uh, Ingram cast his body over the bow. He shot through the water as fast as his skin skinny arms would take him. Oil caked his face, making it difficult to see. With a thankful heart, he remembered the instructor who had given him free swimming instructions during his childhood at the local YMCA. After plowing through the tumultuous waves for a long time, Ingram paused to gulp in deep breaths. Feeling very alone, he resumed swimming, though uh, the terrifying night passed slowly and he tread water in the cold sea. But a Japanese patrol boat spied him and he had no choice but to go aboard the vessel. That he was interrogated, but the Japanese became disgusted with his inadequate uh, replies and threw him overboard. He was rescued and then um, was taken to a dock where he and some other soldiers, uh, sailors who had been rescued, spotted a building with a red cross on the front. It appeared to be a former prison. Cautiously, they approached. When the people inside seemed eager to offer food and clothing, the Americans gratefully ate a meal and bedded down in the cells. Upon awakening, however, they found the cells locked. It had been a trap. The Javanese men in charge of the prison notified Japanese officials in the area, and Ingram again became a captive of the Japanese. The prisoners were taken to a theater in Sarang, Java, where they were tied together in pairs. Food for them consisted of small portions of rice balls. To appease their extreme hunger over the next several weeks, the prisoners ate birds, lizards, bugs, worms, whatever they could find. If a snake was found, we'd kill it and cook it and chop it into sections to share, said Ingram. It was eat to live. During a transfer to Singapore, the prisoners met a group of allies allied POWs who shared clothing with them. They were then loaded onto a ship with little drinking water and no private toilets sailing to Burma. After marching barefoot for miles, they arrived at a place where the Japanese were building a railroad. Plans for the Thai Burma Railroad were for it to stretch 250 miles to Bangkok. Its purpose was to transport Japanese troops and weapons in the Burma campaign of the war. Work on the railroad was done with the labor of 250,000 prisoners, including American, British, Australian, and Burmese. Korean nationals, also POWs, served as guards. Each prisoner worked 12 hours a day digging to remove a meter of dirt or two buckets. They worked to meet the quota during the monsoon season and in hot, dry weather. Prisoners were not allowed to talk or communicate while at their tasks. If guards thought a prisoner was not putting forth enough effort, they beat the prisoner with bamboo poles, pickaxes, or rifles. When a, excuse me, when a prisoner fell in exhaustion, he was beaten to death. Of the approximately 102,000 Allied prisoners who died, most were buried close to the railroad. Due to the brutal working conditions, the project became known as the Railway of Death. Uh, the prisoners were bordered by jungle and guards with no fences or gates 
but overworked and underfed, they had no desire to run. Ingram witnessed three men shot while trying to escape. Though discouraged, he kept his spirits revived by promising himself that rescue would happen next week. In June of 1945, Ingram contracted dysentery and malaria. The severity of the diseases caused him to suffer long periods of delirium. Um, each time <clears throat> Ingram awakened as if from a deep sleep, he always seemed to be in a new place. He finally gave up believing he was dead and floating in heaven. At one point he woke up to notice that he was being loaded on a litter to a plane. Panicking, he thrashed about. Gentle hands pushed him back to the stretcher and it occurred to him that he felt stronger than he had in a long time. Exhausted, he again fell asleep. His body had actually been retrieved when the war ended from a prisoner of war camp and he was flown to a hospital in New York City where he received <clears throat> weeks of medical care. After he recovered, the military issued Ingram and other liberated soldiers new uniforms and some cash. Anxious to get home, Ingram hopped on a troop train to Illinois. He didn't notify his family, which he later regretted as his mother nearly had a heart attack at finding him on her doorstep. Ingram stayed in the Navy for 22 years, retiring at the rank of Chief Petty Officer. He later worked in the iron industry and lived with his wife and two children in Jacksonville, Florida. Ingram attributed his survival as a prisoner of war to his upbringing. I grew up poor, so I was used to eating few meals and having no luxuries, he said. I loved being in the military and would do it again, except for the Burmese part. Of the 1,068 men who manned the Houston, approximately 368 escaped from the sinking ship. Most were captured in the sea or the jungles of Java. Only 289 survived in Japanese prisoner of war camps. The Thai portion of the railway continues to exist. Out of respect for the dead soldiers that built the Kwai Bridge, a new bridge was built and the original bridge closed to trains in 19, or 2014. The bridge is still open to foot traffic. Thank you to all the veterans watching this. I appreciate your service. We wouldn't be free without you. Today's story, again, was from the book Captured, um, Stories of American World War II Prisoners of War. We talked about uh, the sailor right here named Bill Ingram. Stay tuned for next week uh, when we will come back with another exciting story of veterans. And I hope you will subscribe and like this channel. Thank you.